Water, they say, is life. It is an essential resource for all living things on the planet and the most abundant liquid on Earth, covering more than 70% of the Earth's surface. Man can survive longer without food than without water. In addition to drinking, clean water is used by every household and for industrial use in a variety of situations on a daily basis. So, water is not just needed to maintain the biological fluid equilibrium of the human body, but it is an indispensable commodity that helps keep our surroundings clean and help to reduce incidences of water transmitted and related diseases. In life generally, after air comes water. And that's why they say water is life. Everybody is supposed to have access to a portable water in their house. First of all, drinking and cooking, then keeping the house clean, safe and secured. The significance of water is to the extent that globally, the UN has set aside every 22nd day of March annually to celebrate this all-important resource as well as advocate for sustainable management of freshwater resource. In spite of these awareness and the fact that Nigeria is surrounded by large volumes of this nature's gift, access to this basic commodity for the mass of the Nigerian population has remained a challenge, thus leading to more people suffering from illnesses linked with contaminated water if we are able to prevent waterborne diseases, it means that the cost of health will go down on individual posts and also go down on, on government posts. The desire to solve the very disturbing health and environmental challenge posed by the near lack of portable water propelled the Governor Ifanyo Kowa led administration in Delta State to introduce a program aimed at resuscitating the 10 zonal water management offices spread across the state namely Asaba, Wari, Abo, Bomodi, Kwale, Ogwashoku, Urerukbe, Ozoro, Sapele, and Ugeli. Right now, if you go to Ogwashoku, see EU carrying out rehabilitation of Ogwashoku water scheme, which is now functioning. You go to Buluku, Buluku is being carried out. We are rehabilitating Asaba, uh, regional scheme. Since it's happening at Ugeli, Today, I can assure you that our scheme will have over 70% functioning. As a politician with very deep bias for grassroots development and being the pioneer commissioner in charge of the Water Resources Ministry during the Governor James Onanefebori administration, Governor Ifanyo Koa no doubt had a first hand knowledge of the challenges bedeviling the water sector. As such, he deployed a multi-pronged approach to tackle the menace. If the water that we ingest is not clean, it can cause a lot of diseases. Far-reaching steps were taken to reposition the Ministry of Water Resources with a view to enabling it to provide safe, accessible and healthy water to homes and public institutions in Delta. Governor Kowa has done well and we encourage him to do more because uh, with the project for now has been implemented in just the pilot for local government. If you can replicate in more local governments and more beneficiaries can come in, it will be a, a tremendous thing. The Governor Fanyo Kowa led administration at inception in 2015 took steps to immediately strengthen all service providers along the portable water delivery value chain. One major step in this regard was the presentation to the State Assembly, a bill titled the Delta State Water and Sanitation Bill, which when passed into law, will help galvanize the general workings of the Water Resources Ministry. The intake of the bill, it will create uh, room for urban water, rural water, small town water projects and also it will regulate our water system. He further demonstrated his resolve to address the water challenge by being the first Niger Delta state to pay its counterpart funds and in succession in the past three and a half years both for the state and the pilot local government areas. 
Today, there is a very strong partnership with UNICEF, European Union, and Delta State. The governor was the first to pay up our counterpart. So it has been a plus even in the EU because anytime they mention Delta, oh no, that's the governor that bought into the project and was the first to pay up the counterpart and the people are really happy. With more than 80% of the state population dwelling in the rural areas, it therefore means that river water, rain water and well water remain major sources of water. As a trained medical doctor, Governor Ifanyokoa understands the implications these sources of water could have on the human health. As such, access to safe, clean water can help save lives, especially as most women and children die annually from preventable diseases. Water and sanitation are now treated as an economic good. There is an improved sanitation, there is improved water supply. And the system is a sustainable one because it's a process being supported by government but being driven by the communities. As girls, we have a very sophisticated and complicated body and therefore we need to maintain personal hygiene, environmental hygiene. I also tell the junior students that they should make use of clean water to wash themselves. Before now, we were not conscious of the effects of open defecation. But after the series of enlightenment campaigns, we are better educated and know what to do. Thank you, Governor Kowa. They good. They bring this water for us to drink. They do everything. The governor, through the Ministry of Water Resources and other supporting agencies such as Delta State Urban Water Board, Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Agency, Ruat San, has carried out wholeheartedly the prosperity agenda across the rural areas. Today, Ndokwa West and Isoko South have success stories to tell. I feel very relaxed because before I used to go far away and forage water. The water really helped us to cook and wash, wash our clothes and wash plates. I use it to bed also. Some of us who go out to canvas to talk to the people, it was as if we were joking, we were trying to bring something strange. But with this project standing today, it is a convincing factor that yes, it is real. <laughs> so refreshing. <laughs> so madam, yes, why this kiosk? Well, the water kiosk was constructed because we trained the community that to sustain their water facilities. So we constructed the water kiosk so that they can sell water to enhance them, raise funds for sustainability, for operation and maintenance. So that's why the water kiosk was constructed. Alongside the water kiosk, there are other lockable stand taps that are closer to the houses okay. where the people can fetch water. Everybody is happy with the Okoa government because he make it possible by paying the counterpart, which they ask him to pay, and he pay for it before our little one will just contribute. Scaling up to the next phase, Okwani local government area and Ethiopia East local government area are fast gearing up to be enlisted in the scheme. The bidding process for selecting reputable contractors to handle the construction and completion of water supply schemes and sanitation facilities is a very important part of the process and it is usually conducted by the supervising agency. Before we started this procurement, there was an agreed procurement guideline and one of the rules there is that at 11 o'clock, the procurement is closed. And those who came late could not accept their bid documents just to ensure that transparency is guaranteed. Welcome to Delta. My Delta, my Delta. Ah. Welcome to Delta. I my Delta, my Delta. Come live in Delta. Come invest in Delta. Come explore the potentials of our state. Better run, run, come. Come to Delta State.
come and see the good things where Okowa he they do he better. Run, come, come to Delta State. Come and see the good things where Okowa he they do. Governor Ifani Okoa has defied the daunting challenges of the riverine communities and the creeks to bring portable water to Bomodi, a local government area that has not seen portable water for more than 20 years but relied on the many tributaries of the River Niger as their only source of water supply. It is the River Niger water we have been drinking for the past years. We are very lucky that His Excellency Dr. Ifan Yokoa has come to our aid to rehabilitate this water to see that Bomodi local government and Bomodi community partake of his good development strife, his smart agenda. Ha! Ah, too much. It go help us well, well. Because when we they drink this clean water, you no more pause again. I'm so happy that they are doing this water. It will help us a lot because once they finish with this water now, and we use it as a drinking water, as bathing water. The small town's water supply and sanitation agency, Stoasa, is the agency behind the ministry's new strategy for improved service delivery for the provision of portable water to deltans, particularly in the urban and city centers and regional water schemes in line with global best standards. Government has accordingly approved and awarded the upgrade of Asaba and Ugeli water schemes. The mandate is to ensure sustainable water supply and sanitation and hygiene service delivery in all small towns across the United States. So the need came that let's use small towns as a model to start a new partnership, whereby they are what we call community ownership, where the community people see themselves as partner the government, the ownership of those water asking. The topography in Oguashiku is a peculiar one. To this end, the ministry has not only been piling pressures on the Federal Ministry of Water Resources for the completion of the dam, but also to hand over the operations and management of the dam to the state. <laughs> And then an Adam and Afafon are tired of too much. Kago Matiromaka. The dam, with adequate treatment plants, has the capacity to supply portable water to Oguashuku main town, Ubuluku, on a Chubu axis to Ibuzo and the Asaba State Capital Territory. Smart Delta. The situation is not different in so many schools in the state. The lack of access to safe water, private toilets and hand washing facilities has no doubt affected enrollment and performance, particularly in the case of girls, and this is quite disturbing. However, the trend is fast changing as the motorized boreholes and public toilets constructed in both rural and urban schools are on the increase. Hereby, commission for the glory of God and for our children yet to come. This institution will produce many enlightened people in this kingdom Amen. and in this whole generation. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> As a government, we are of course very delighted that we've been able to deliver on a lot of our promises. But you can see the excitement on the faces of the members of the community and also the students. So it's 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 been very good, and we're we're glad that it's turned out very well. It is not easy to uh, carry out such a, a laudable project in my school. I'm indeed very grateful to the governor. In the schools, we have uh, sanitation facilities. Uh, which uh, also impacting uh, on the students. You know, where you have good toilets, uh, that the girls, they are more encouraged to go to school. We intervene even in, uh, in the cities. Even in Asabaya, we have built even the toilets for school. Uh. The twin city of Wari and Efru, up to the Udu local government area, in no distant time, will witness a new lease of life as the Okawa-led administration has signed an MOU with a new contractor, AG Gold Trust, to solely undertake the development of water supply for the areas under the Build, Own, Operate and Transfer Agreements, 
B-O-O-T. We are fortunate to have a governor because he was at the time the Commissioner of Water Resources. So when the project was being reviewed in the era of uh, James Bory, he was in charge. The government is uh, uh, trying to repackage the project whereby a single contractor will be fully in charge uh, so that inter contractors uh, uh, conflict or uh, problems will be eliminated. A visit by the small Delta crew to the massive facility situated in Wari town, commonly known as Don Domingo Headworks, was a pleasant surprise. It has in it high quality equipment constructed and installed by Joes Hansen and CERN in Hamburg, Germany. There are facilities ranging from laboratory for water quality control, electromechanical workshop, fuel compound with two 1,500 kVA generating sets, to water filter building, chemical building, and the chlorine building for treatment. The zonal manager, Mr. Bemigo Enonia, talked more on the facility. It's a very great one. He has actually done very well because this initiative is going to help to bring potable water to people and eliminate uh, waterborne disease around this area. It's also generate revenue, as we have said before, for this state. This project is a reality. <laughs> the water tower, which is 45 meters high with a 2,800 cubic capacity, serves as a storage tank for treated water, which is collected and processed at the high lift pump station. The source of water right here is the borehole, and we actually have. Um, 17 boreholes spread around this uh, project site. When the water gets here, it means that it's ready for consumption. Residents are already counting yes, their gains and are in a hurry for their projects to be completed. This, they said, will provide employment for the teaming youths as over 20,000 houses will be networked with portable and safe water. The welcome idea to me and our people because it will enhance development within our area and also help our youth to gain some employment. Ah, the water is enough. It's very good. Now that our government is pushing ahead to bring back the project, I'll be the happiest person. We're very happy that this project is commencing, which will engulf so many people in terms of the job. And secondly, water has a good source of uh, a livelihood for man. So I want to commend the effort of the government. Despite this plethora of achievements, Governor Kaua is not resting on his oars in the delivery of his mandate to the people. In line with this, the Ministry of Water Resources Development, in collaboration with Imani Global Network Limited, on the 26th of January 2018, flagged off a testing and data analysis of water sources. This would help determine the status of the quality of water consumed by Deltans. The concept is for people to really know the status of their water because it's one thing for you to have water and then for you to know if it's good for you to drink or not. Now, um, over the years, you hear different kinds of diseases ravaging people and most of the diseases could be traced to water. Now, because our company you know, over the years has been involved with water test analysis with NAVDAC and other agencies, we have to collaborate with the state government to see how we can come in so as to reduce this diseases. While the provision of portable water has continued to receive prime attention, the okoa led government has equally exerted tremendous amounts of energy in the management of water bodies and channels within the state. The state's Ministry of Environment has been busy with both dredging activities and intense desilting of water channels with a view to tackle the menace of flooding which has become a recurring decimal that sometimes leaves devastating effects on humans, their livelihood and infrastructure. Some of the buildings were submerged in water until the commissioner came with his team to come and open up the canals. And now, from what you are seeing here is a big relief to us in this community. We want to thank uh, the governor of Delta State, Okowa, for being there for the people. I will appreciate the state government. They've done well for listening to the cry of the people. If not for the intervention of the state government, we would have not been staying here. 
God, it is dangerous. The activities of the Delta State Environment Ministry has helped to mitigate the devastating effects of the massive flood that submerged many coastal communities in the state. What we did here now is to open the waterway so that all the flooded area upland in the town, the water will flow out. What we, the first time we open up to the main discharge point, which is River Etu. That is why you're seeing the current of water. The, the, the flood eater land are all discharging now into River Etu. To further boost the efforts of the Environment Ministry and other interventionist agencies involved in providing succor to victims of flood, Governor Fanyo Koa personally visited the affected communities and directed immediate evacuation of the people living in flood-prone areas. What did that side again? Yes, sir. there is nobody there now. Okay, so that means they have moved there. Except a few people, many of them are not really submerged as such. They have already directed that 10 bigger buses be sent to different places. That you've been told, like the one on the power line now, those people that are trapped in the prime school, they only need a bus to move them to the Julius Berger site, so I've already directed that a bus be sent there. Besides evacuation of the people to the state temporary IDP camps, Governor Fanyo Koa ordered the provision of medical and welfare facilities to the camps. He also promised to assist the victims to resettle when the flood recedes. Our town, our village has been submerged by flood. Our crops, our rice farm, our yam farm, cassava and everything that is planted this year has been submerged by the flood. First thing is to take care of people's life, make them not go lose their life. Because they don't get place when they are prepared for savannah, when people go move, go. If that place is not rich, as to the Wakago will go put more places where they go feed them that time, uh, within the period. And then when people don't do they will go document everybody. Then no waiting will come do for each person to assist. Make it not be say everything when we do for the whole year loss. So government will go definitely do something to reach out to to we people. Vice President Yemi Osimajo, who recently visited the state on assessment tour of some flooded communities, took our time to view video clips of the efforts of the Delta State government in the management of water bodies in the state. What we're trying to do here, and, with the, and we've seen a lot of what the state government has done. Uh, a lot of ca uh, canals have been built, a lot of, um, and this has, is practically all over the place. So there are very many steps uh, that have been taken, but very frequently you'll find that sometimes the levels, even just the levels of rainfall, are such that they are unprecedented. Uh, we must commend all of those who have worked very hard to ensure that this doesn't get out of control. The state government, the SEMA, NEMA also, the National Emergency Management Authority. The Vice President, while empathizing with the people for their plight, commended the Delta State Government for the quick response and for providing succor to the internally displaced persons' IDPs. We must commend the government of Delta State and the governor of Delta State for moving very swiftly and for putting this place in the kind of order that it's in today. I've looked around very quickly. The facilities here are adequate. The clinic and the bed spaces are also quite adequate. So we want to commend the governor for doing so well. Meanwhile, Without prejudice to activities of relevant agencies to resettle IDPs and to create a comfortable, safe and clean environment for all Deltans and the business community across the state, government, through the Ministry of Environment over the period, has embarked on mechanical desiltation and opening of natural waterways, canals and drains, including construction of concrete box culverts across the state. We thank government for what government has done to us because we don't even know, say, government money will enter this our road. But today, I am very happy. Definitely, with this project, with what it's doing now, it's going to have our support 100% in this present dispensation because we have shown that, yes, it's a capable leader, it's carrying his people along, and it's affecting the masses positively. Yes, I thank God, the governor of Delta State, Ifan Okowa, 
But because of this COVID, uh, flood will not happen in the local government again. As a precautionary measure, the Ministry of Environment, working with the State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, embarked on sensitization and enlightenment campaigns in the flood prone areas of the state in response to flood warnings. The ministry recently attended to a distress call from residents of Agbaro and other areas. We have severally, forcefully let them know that they don't need to throw deaths into the waterway. By way of sensitization, even in local languages, we have made them know. But in the night, you see people coming secretly to throw death into the waterway. That is the cause of the problem today now. But you know, government is the father of all. Whether they've done wrong or not, all we need to do is to save life first. Indeed, it is not in doubt that distinguished Senator Dr. Arthur Ifanyokoa has demonstrated the political will and is committed to ensuring that Deltans live healthy.